Hello. Oh, there it is. It's working. I'm back. Chris Waters here, continuing to host on stage one. GameSpot's E3 2013 coverage continues. Joining me on stage, a man I spoke with last year about the Elder Scrolls Online. I think we'll have significantly more to talk about this year as the game is further along in development, and I've even played it. Please welcome Paul Sage. Paul, welcome Hi, to the stage. Thanks so much. Glad to have you here. Uh, what do you think of this year's stage versus last year's? I'm sure you have an impeccable memory of, of last year's setup. Uh, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> but this year's show is different for you because last year you guys were sort of just announced, and now uh, you know, you've made a big announcement. It's going to be on not just PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4 as well. Uh, and you've got a whole lot more to show. People are playing it over in the South Hall. Right. How's it going? Uh, the response has been great, right? So uh, always fun to show it at a show like this. Uh, you get to see people play real time. Probably one of the best things I got to see was uh, we had two people who didn't know each other side by side, and then they both realized they were playing together, and then they joined up, and they, you know, they fought a big monster in one of our dungeons, and it was fantastic watching their faces. So it's it's one of those things where you start playing Elder Scrolls, and then you realize there's another person here with me, right? And I think that's awesome. Yeah, and you know that's certainly familiar to MMO players, but. To Elder Scrolls players, you know, Skyrim, I'm not used to seeing somebody come alongside and engage me and have have their name, you know, and, and be ready to actively undertake something with me. It's it's a novel, it's, it feels novel almost in within that realm because the Elder Scrolls Online feels like such an Elder Scrolls world. And so how did you guys, you know, what... We're, we're taking a look at some uh, some B-roll here of the different environments. How is Cyrodiil shaping up for the for the MMO setting? Uh, Cyrodiil is, you know, again, that's where uh, the game took place in Oblivion, sure. right? And so for us, Cyrodiil is, is really where the conflict between the three alliances we have uh, for the players are. Uh -huh. So since the players could join either the Daggerfall Covenant or the all Mary Dominion or the Ebonheart Pact, uh, they're really trying to crown somebody as Emperor, right? And so... Getting somebody as Emperor means you have to have these huge siege battles to take over keeps, and the more uh, land you own, so to speak, is, is kind of where you get your power base. Uh -huh. And so, you know, you have things, and they're like catapults, trebuchets, you have battering rams, and, and, and all of this, and, you know, you see 200 people on the screen at the same time, thousands of people fighting over these keeps, boiling oil. It's just a fun party. <laughs> <laughs> a fun party is certainly one way to describe it. That sounds like utter carnage, uh, but that is a lot of people's definition of fun in the video game realm. Um, so I got to play at PAX East, and it was a scenario where, you know, I sat down and I've, I've played a bunch of Skyrim on, or a bunch of Elder Scrolls games across consoles, and I ended up just getting sucked right in, and one of the things I think that did it for me was the first-person view, uh, which, you know, so great on consoles. You guys are giving folks the option, though, of third-person, first-person. How's it breaking down in terms of player choice, as you've seen so far? Um, well, right now what we're noticing is that if people PvP or they're kind of in a situation where, you know, a monster might appear behind them, they like that situational awareness of, uh, you know, the third-person camera. Yep. But once you get into first-person camera and you're more of an explorer and you're seeing the details of the world, I, I, I think that immersion really adds a lot to the game, and I think that's why people are so drawn to it. So it's been a while since, uh, you know, you've had a real first-person with hands, so to speak, in an MMO, and but it's natural for an Elder Scrolls, and so I think it's a great feature. It absolutely is. And... Uh... Uh, that exploration is something I really got got into during the the demo I played, and you know it was actually kind of similar to this. I was just like going to an objective. I was going to go meet somebody, and I found a treasure chest. What's in the treasure chest? Not treasure, but like a riddle to go find another treasure. It's a treasure map, and then I'm doing that, and I discover this little cave, and went in there, and lo and behold, there's creatures there. It's is it is populating the world for that kind of discoverability different because it, in the MMO format or do you still adhere to the same kind of design philosophies? A, a little different just because you know we have a level based game and when you have a level based game one of the things you you almost have to do is, is kind of uh, restrict certain areas. I mean you can go there but you know you're going to die if you go into something that's too high level. But we have such a huge game that even at your level there'll be a lot of the world to explore. And so you'll see things like chests, as you mentioned, and you'll see things like you know books and other things that draw you to the game. And that you know almost like oh I'm I'm on a quest and I'm going to go rescue you know uh, somebody from something. And and then all of a sudden you see oh but wait there's a dungeon over there. Oh, okay, time to go veer off. Yeah, you know. I'll just, take, I'll just stop here on the way there. And then of course. So many of those stops are never just a simple stop in, because the world is so rich uh, and full of horrible bugs like this one that we have just murdered in in the footage. Uh, we've got a lot of questions coming in. I'm going to take a look here at uh, Twitter, and we answered the 
third person is first person. We took care of that one already. Uh, Jillian Simpson wants to know about how many people in one world are you going to sort of see? You mentioned in a, a PvP situation in Siege Battle, you know, hundreds of people taking the field at the same time. Let's say when I'm exploring, how many people am I going to see around and, and stuff like that? How are you managing that? Uh, so we have a technology that we're calling our mega server technology. Mega uh, server? That's what we're calling it. <laughs> <laughs> and so the idea is, is that we can allow you to play with everybody, you know, that, that's in, in roughly the same world. So you never see server boundaries as such. And so one of the things that you're able to do is if you have a friend, you know, for instance, that might be in what we call a channel or a different version of the game, you know, which is somewhat similar if you think about it to servers, then you can just jump in and join them at any time, right? And so um, I, I think with that technology, there's, it, there's not necessarily a limit to how many people are going to be in there, but we're going to make sure that the experience, you know, if you had obviously a million players all fighting for the same monster, that would be horrible. Yep. So we're going to balance that out to where it's a, a really natural experience. And that really depends on the area more than anything else. And it also, it may be too early to clarify this kind of thing, but her question also encompasses the differences between PC and the next-gen consoles that you guys recently announced. PlayStation 4 and Xbox One are going to play host to the Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, you know, I guess the question I have to actually now that I'm thinking of, is there going to be cross-platform play between? Uh, so PlayStation 4 uh, players will play with other PlayStation 4 players. Okay. Xbox One will play with the Xbox One, and PC and Mac will play in the same uh, environment. Okay. And uh, are you finding that, you know, those, those next-gen consoles are a good fit for the Elder Scrolls Online, and you can have those kind of big massively multiplayer experiences? I mean, the next-gen consoles are extremely powerful, right? They're great machines. So yeah, absolutely, um, it's it's going to be largely the same experience. Probably the difference is going to be in the, in the way the UI is done, uh, you, you know, for uh, consoles, because we want to bring out the best of the controllers. And you know, for PC and uh, Mac, they're used to keyboard and uh, mouse, and so we want to make sure that that interface is is you know not influenced uh, in anything other than it's great for the PC and the Mac. Yep, built for that platform specifically. Question coming in from the Twitch chat, wondering about um, oh nuts, I just lost it. Oh yeah, okay. So you were talking about you know tailoring the controls and the the HUD to to the different consoles. Phonics wants to know. You know, in terms of other MMOs, they have action bars on screen. In terms of, but you know, Skyrim, there's there's almost no HUD to speak of. What, what do you get, do? You guys have options, or uh, what what is the player's view going to look like when they're in first person or third person? Right. So, right away in the game, uh, long before uh, we even thought about whether we're going to do this on consoles, we said we want to immerse the player in the world. And so, part of immersing the player in the world is taking away those UI elements, right, and, and not having them on the screen so much. And I think it's one of the things that leads to people saying, "Hey, this really starts feeling like an Elder Scrolls game." We do have a shortcut bar, but that shortcut bar is a, a related to context. So, if you're uh, mousing over a monster or something of that nature, then it'll come up to show you, "Hey, which buttons do you have to press to fire off certain spells?" Because, as you know, in a massively multiplayer, there's no pausing. You don't get to pause to do what you want to do. No, you do not. Yeah, you can't so just cycle through. It's got to happen right then because yeah. that monster's coming for you. Yeah, so that's why we have a you know a shortcut bar, but again, it's it's a really limited interface because we think that's what just, or engages the players in the world. You get to see what the monster's going to do on screen versus watching what a little uh, UI element is telling you to do. I, uh, Derek on Twitter wants to know, will this PC version support a uh, gamepad controller? Uh, right now, we're still uh, on keyboard and mouse, but you know, uh, won't rule that out and see what the future holds. Yeah, I mean, you guys are also you, you're de you have the design set for a gamepad controller, so who knows? Uh, all right, question about stealth. You know, when you're in a massively multiplayer online world, there's a lot of other people around to see you, but stealth is a big part of the way some people like to play the Elder Scrolls. How does that does that work similarly in the Elder Scrolls Online? Absolutely. So, uh, you know, on the PC controls, I can tell you that you just hit control, you duck down, you see the little eye in the middle of the screen, and it gets to where, oh, you're hidden. Uh -huh. And then, uh, you know, you get certain bonuses if you're hidden and you attack somebody from behind. So sure. there's a lot of stealthing elements in the game, and, uh, yeah, I think it's a really compelling way to play. Very cool. Uh, questions? People are curious about the different races you can play as, the cleaning crew specifically. Uh, Advantages and disadvantages to the different races uh, that you can choose, and actually, what are the different races you can choose? Okay, so you can choose from nine different races. Uh, there, there's three per alliance, so yes. we mentioned three alliances earlier. So, you, you know, I mean, it, 
it's a little bit. <laughs> to you don't go have to through. rattle them all off right, right now. I'm yeah. sure that so people can guess at the majority of them if they have any other right. scrolls experience. Yeah. yeah, Nord, Argonian, and you know all the rest. But the nice thing about choosing a race is you have a skill line associated with that race. Okay. So just like you have for choosing your class, you have a uh, different abilities. You know, in your classes, you also have it for your race skill line. So you'll be able to you know look at that skill line and kind of say like, oh yeah, that's pretty compelling. That's what I want to play. Um, so there's a lot of reasons to pick race. Indeed. Um, of course, people are super eager to get their hands on it. They're talking already about an open beta. Is that something you guys are considering, or is that still too far out for you to, to know about? So we're actually in closed beta right now, um, which is great. Uh, we're getting a lot of uh, good response. I'd, I'd say that the number of signups has been absolutely overwhelming. Uh, <laughs> I believe you know, uh, but yeah, so we will see um, when we get to an open beta, if we get to an open beta, but I do think that that's part of the plan. All right, Paul. Uh, folks uh bureau islands is wondering about pets this is actually i like almost every demo now because call of duty has a dog i get just beagle pictures and people asking about pets but it actually makes sense in the mmo setting you know in skyrim you had you had uh followers people you could have along with you you can have any tag along folks as an option in the elder scrolls online sure so there will be uh npcs you'll meet in the world um you know and you'll get to have them play along with you and they'll they'll help you out uh one of the interesting things when you talk about pets is mounts um and so our mount system is pretty interesting in the fact that you get to start off with a horse and uh depending on the kind of horse you buy you get to feed it different things and what you feed it determines how that mount's going to grow, so it'll get either faster, be able to sprint longer with stamina, or be able to carry more. And so you're really growing your mount however you oh, like. Yes, you can customize it. Uh, will it be able to grow wings <laughs> or another pair of legs? Uh, not that I'm aware of. No Island of Dr. Moreau in Elder Scrolls Online? Ah, all right, that's fine. Um, so uh, El Duce Assassin wants to know about PvP. You touched on it earlier. Uh, with the very evocative mention of keeps and boiling oil and hundreds of people battling. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on PvP? Sure. So one of the things, again, that you're trying to do is trying to get Emperor status, you know, as a uh, PvP player. Um, but we also have those skill lines I mentioned. So as you do different things in PvP, like say I kill a player, I'll get what I call alliance points. Right, and so you'll have alliance points. Also, if you capture keep, you get alliance points. Um, your guild, if you sign up for a guild, they can actually claim a keep, and these help uh, get you alliance points. And what you do with those alliance points is you buy new gear, or you can buy new abilities in your skill lines. And so there are specific skill lines for ABA that you know there's a lot of reason for you to want to participate rather in the uh, PVP battles or the alliance war. Okay, so you can, and is that character that you bring in there is that the same character you're using across all modes of Elder Scrolls Online? Absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Uh, dragons. So during this time, the dragons aren't uh, around. Pre-dragons or post-dragons? Not sure. Uh, questions about level cap. I mean, come on. Level cap, really? Uh, one, Dan is wondering, you know, in MMOs, when you come across people, uh, one of the ways you, you find people to play with, you interact with people you see in the world, is through chat and through typing some messages in a little chat window. Right. How's that communication going to work on consoles, which, you know, people don't really have a keyboard plugged into? Right. So, you know, we're still working on uh, the console interface, and we'll probably be talking more about it. Okay. But as you can probably imagine, you know, one of the things we have, you know, just as an introduction, is a radio menu that when you get next to somebody, you have a little context sensitivity uh, where you just pop up and say, I want to invite you to a group or lots of other things. So it'll probably stem off something a lot like that. All right. Uh, folks are curious about, uh, of course, the business model, but you mentioned to me you guys aren't talking about free-to-play, what the monthly fee, anything. None of that stuff you guys are not talking about yet. Right. Just had to let you guys know. Uh, all right. Folks are curious about, yep, all that stuff. Oculus Rift support. <laughs> so, so yeah, so the <laughs> Oculus Rift is a pretty fascinating piece of technology, have you gotten, right? gotten to check it out yet? I, I have looked at it a little bit. You know, I mean, it's really cool, but uh, we haven't even gone into Oculus Rift ter <laughs> territory at this point. If wishes were horses, folks. Um, so, Chicken Oxo is curious about mods because Skyrim PC community is silly with mods. Uh, GameSpot features Skyrim mods regularly, and people love it uh, there's still such a robust development community around that i guess is that something that's going to factor into the mmo or is that something you have taken any inspiration from for the elder scrolls online 
Um, yeah, I think the mod community is amazing, obviously, for Skyrim, and uh, there's a lot there for the mod community. Um, for us, uh, you know, a lot of people look at UI as something that they want to mod, and so we've actually added, uh, you know, Lua functionality for modding the UI in the game, and so that'll be available to uh, PC and Mac players. Nice. Very cool. Uh, Eminent Stranger is curious about crafting and trading. All right. I mean, those are... Obviously very big topics within the world of the Elder Scrolls, but what can you tell us about it? Uh, crafting is great. Uh, so if you played uh, Skyrim, then you might be familiar with uh, alchemy and you know how you would experiment with the different additives and ingredients and you'd see like, okay, well this actually helps with fire resistance or whatever it might be. Yep. And so that discovery was kind of the baseline for where we wanted to take our crafting. And so there's a lot of discovery. So instead of just crafting the same thing over and over again, the discoveries you make actually add more to your skills as you grow. So you get uh, five different skills. Uh, so say armor craft, uh, weapon craft. Um, we have a provisioner, uh, which is a lot like cooking. Uh -huh. And then we have, of course, alchemists and enchanters. Yep. And so there's a lot of discovery there. And you'll get to actually um, decide, you know, if I don't want to play and I, a, a quest today, or if I just want to hang out and do something like I want to craft, absolutely, you can just do that. Nice. You know, you just want to sit down in Skyrim. That's actually something I used to do in Skyrim. I would play, but not feel particularly adventurous. I'd just go sit in the library and read some books. There you go. Uh, Airborne Kitten is curious about the loot system. Um, of course, in Skyrim, players had to fight valiantly against the urge to pick up everything that wasn't nailed down. Some players. Uh, but in MMOs, you know, there's, a, there's loot sharing. There's sort of multiple people have conspired to get the same reward. How are you guys handling that? Uh, so our loot is actually instanced to the player. Okay. So if you and I were to go into a dungeon together and let's say we killed a big monster together, you would get loot and I would get loot and it would be instanced just to us, uh, you know, uh, the people who contributed to that kill. So you don't have to fight over uh, who gets the, you know, plus 25 sword of a friend's lane. Rockstar Kid is curious about player homes. That's something you guys uh, heard that you know, was added onto Skyrim. Um, you're going to be able to craft your sweet abode? <laughs> Not at ship. You won't be able to do that at ship for sure. Okay. Um, question from Penguin Archer about relationships and breeding. You gonna, I, don't, I don't know what the timeline of uh, Elder Scrolls Online is like, but do you uh, romance options for any uh, player characters? Uh, so there, there is something, and, and you know, I don't want to call it a romance, uh, you know, I, could be something else entirely, you know, yep. just just a friendship. But uh, we do have um, something in the game where you can actually perform a ceremony, um, and you'll get rings out of that ceremony. And if you wear those rings when you adventure together, you'll get experience bonus. So it's kind of like a commitment to have, you know, almost a long-term relationship with somebody. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and so we, we want to support that because it's it's fun when you're in with the person you play with a lot, and that's great for us. Can you have multiple rings out with multiple people? Uh, well, it might be expensive, but I suppose you could. <laughs> <laughs> it might get a little costly to maintain those kind of relationships. Or in those kind of relationships. <laughs> uh, all right, so people are curious about guilds, Jordan wants to know. Uh, what kind of guilds have been a part of that world for so long? Are they in the MMO? They absolutely are. So uh, th th it's funny because we, we can talk about two different kinds of guilds. We can talk about the in-game guild, okay. like the uh, Fighters Guild and the Mages Guild, or yep. we can talk about, uh, you know, the player guilds. Well, Fighters Guild, Mages Guild, those are pretty similar to how they have been. In, you know, you go on quests for them, you earn status within those guilds, presumably. Absolutely, that so, is the way it works. Cool, so let's talk player guilds. All right, so player guilds are really fun. Um, you can actually, if you have an established guild, like let's say even before you know we ship the game, you can get on the web, you can just start signing up for a guild that you know, and, and have your established members be in that guild. Uh -huh. And then when you get in the game, that guild's going to be there for you. It's going to have the reserve name and everything else, um, which is pretty fun. Um, but then you know, when you're with when you're in a guild in the game, you'll be able to do things like uh, claim keeps, like I talked about, and there'll be certain bonuses that you get for that. Uh -huh. um, you know, of course, you'll have the guild leader uh, who gets to set permissions within the guild. Um, you know, so it's, it's a really robust system. We've got a few more things that we're going to announce later about the guilds. But, you know, one thing that's kind of interesting is, of course, you have a guild bank um, where you get to put oh, yes. all your items. And, uh, you know, and I, I mean, I, I think that's fairly typical. But later on, we'll start talking about how we build on that system. How you guys sort of make it Elder scrolls -y and take it in your own direction. Yeah. I'm intrigued. All right. Man, these are coming fast and furious. Here's an easy one. L Greek, will this game destroy my social life? Actually, 
Maybe not as much as previous Elder Scrolls have because you can have your, it would just transfer your social life, right? That is exactly my answer. <laughs> Uh, people, how many people on a server? Technical stuff like that. I imagine it's still a little early for you guys to mention uh, sort of that, that's those specifics. Right. So uh, again, with the it doesn't matter because of the way the technology works, you won't have to worry about being a part of a server. What did you say? Your mega server or something? Mega server. Mega server. Right. Dun, dun, dun. All right. That is a lot. There's more and more and more questions for the Elder Scrolls Online, but I think we're gonna wrap it up pretty shortly. I'm just gonna give you one more. Um. People are wondering about respecting your skills, uh, being able to change the way you sort of taking that experience that you've earned and you've put into your different abilities and pulling a switcheroo. Is that is that something you can do with the same character, or is it best to just start a new character? It's something you're going to be able to do with the same character. I mean, we've been doing this a long time. We understand that you know you might make a, a mistake in the way you want to grow your character. Or you just want to try something different out. There's going to be respec in. There has to be respec in. Even if we didn't put it in at ship, they'd make us put it in respec. <laughs> so. would just, you would hear about it, and then it would go in shortly That's after. Right. So we're just going to cut to the chase and make sure it's in. Good call. Uh, how long does it take to walk across Cyrodiil Wonders, Bureau Island? Ooh, okay, so that's a tough question. So uh, I'll give you roughly the mathematics of it. If okay. you can go 6.5 meters per second in the game at a run, right. maybe you could go faster if you sprint. And then you take uh, Cyrodiil, which is roughly what we call nine of our zones. Uh -huh. and, and imagine a zone is about three kilometers long. And then you can kind of start figuring out these things because I can't figure it out on stage. <laughs> Ask a question, get a math problem here on the GameSpot stage show. But he gave you the answer. It's such stuff to you to figure it out. I'm sure someone in the chat on twitch.tv slash GameSpot will figure it out. And, uh, Paul, thank you so much for coming on here and talking about the Elder Scrolls Online. The deluge of question continues, but I think we're going to move on. Send you on your way to experience the rest of E3. And just thanks again. Thank you so much. And uh, But before you, let you go, actually... Beta, release date, schedules, what, when, are, when are people going to be able to get a little more and to actually get into the game? Right, so beta response has been overwhelming, so please be patient, but go sign up if you haven't. Sign um, up where? You can sign up at elderscrollsonline.com. Cool. Yes. And then, uh, you know, in spring of 2014, uh, you'll be able to play the game. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming on stage. Thanks so much. The Elder Scrolls Online, ladies and gentlemen, we're off to the show floor briefly, and then back to the stage show for more live demos.